Now in this video, I'm going to demonstrate how you can use the new update for STL Tone Hub to capture any of your guitar chain signals within your DAW. So it's sort of like a Kemper. So you, they've got this new ability and a feature where you can trace any of your hardware, but you can actually trace anything. So you can even do stuff within your DAW. So basically any of your amp sims or if you're running different IRs and effects and EQs, you can capture all of those and load them into this. So I'm going to demonstrate that here today. But what's new here is these tracer functions here. So basically they've got the trace exchange, which is basically a marketplace where you have all different uh, tones created by community members and they upload them. So it's pretty cool there. You can um, download some of them, upload your own. So if you have anything within your signal chain, like you've got a guitar pedal you like, or if you've got an amp or a cab or anything like that, or any software based stuff, in your signal chain, you can capture it through this. And once you've captured your signal chain, you can go into your traces here and it makes a folder. You've obviously got the ones that you've downloaded from the community, the exchange, or the ones that you've actually created here. This is one that I created using just software, which I'll demonstrate how to do that. So it sounds like this. So if you want to capture your hardware, I recommend looking at the STL Tones um, documentation and uh, they've got some good tutorials there. But if you want to capture it, say you've got a setup like I do here, where you've got your signal chain all built into your DAW. So, so I just captured something here to some EQ before the amp. So just doing the some stuff to the DI there. Also, I added some transient designer here just to add some more attack. Also added this preamp by Slate Digital here just to give it some more virtual drive. And the actual amp here that I captured was the Fort and Nameless one. So these are the amp settings here, just very um, basic here, not too much gain, more gain on the lower end gain um, and a little bit less on the high gain. And I also have the grind pedal here. That kind of helps tighten up the tone so it's not as flobby. Also a little bit of EQ here. I think I just used a preset and just turned off the cab here, just this Thor one with the new Fort and X update. Um, it had this EQ set here, so I just left it as it is. I also have the noise gate and any effects and also the cab turned off. So you can't capture any sort of delay based effects, any compressors or any delays. And it's also best to turn the noise gate off as well. So um, you can have the cab here on if you like the cab sound, but I'm using these cabs here that I really like. Um, I tweaked the settings with this one. So I have two Kali cabs here by Get Good Drums. I have one mic, it's the MD421. And then I have this M160 and I kind of blended them together a little bit brighter here on the MD421 and a little bit darker on the M160. And I've got a thick cab for the first mic and then the massive cab for the second mic. I liked how these two blended together and then that goes into an EQ, which I think I just EQ'd match something. I don't know what from maybe a tone that I liked previously. And that whole guitar chain runs into this guitar bus and this guitar bus, I adjusted this just a little bit. I think I brought down this here, that 6,000 hertz just down a bit. I think it was a bit too high in the original preset. So I just brought it down. And then over on this EQ, just a little bit more tweaking. And this is based on a mix that I had where I had lots of low bass and guitars and everything just to try and make it sit. Um, and I just like the tone that it kind of made with this. So some of these EQ moves are kind of like a bit strange, but like this one here, boosting more of the mids. I find the Fulton uh, Nameless amp, it uh, really struggles in this mid range. So I really trying to get these mids, but like, um, and it's got a lot of harshness as well in certain areas. So it's just like sort of tweaking it to get that right tone for that really low guitars, really low tuned guitars. Anything below drop F is pretty challenging to mix anyway. Uh, I got this CS lift and I'm basically just gave it a little bit more life in the top end there. That's why I had it on there. And it runs into Fab Filters Satin 2. This is one of my favorite plugins. It's a really cool plugin. You can do a lot of advanced stuff with it. But I, for this, I just used the mid range here, just trying to get that warmer mids um, with a bit more distortion just in those mids. So I cranked it up to 38%. And I kind of tweaked the EQ curves here a little bit to try and like uh, mess around with it and just see how it sounded. The high and the low end bands here, they're just all neutral with zero drive. So not affecting because when you distort the low end on something, it can just over, get overblown really easily, especially with the lower guitars. So I've just focused it to that mid range. So to record your tones and whatever you're doing in your DAW here. So what you want to do is you want to have, I've got these three channels here. So basically just look at these two green ones as your guitar signal. So I've got a guitar chain and then that's sending to the guitar bus, which is sending to the this channel here. 
which is the tracer. So I've got it routed like that. So this is, is the original source, the DI sending to this channel, then sending to the tracer. And then the tracer is now sending to the master as a final output. So on the tracer track here, if we go down to the tracer section, we can see here, it gives you this prompt here where you can choose what you're recording. So I'm gonna choose rig. There's a few different options here. And they've also got this hardware setup example as well. So definitely follow the documentation if you're doing this for any hardware. Um, you'll need to have like a reamp box and all of that, which I don't have that, but we don't need to worry about that for how we're doing it with this, which is software. You wanna to go to proceed. And here, if you hit locate, that's gonna take us to this section on your PC where they've given you this tracer tone. So this tracer tone, you wanna drag that tracer tone into your guitar signal chain here. So basically what this tone is, it's just a bunch of clicks and noises and DI sounds, and it's gonna sound like um, a bunch of weird stuff, but that's what we're gonna capture. So the way I've got it routed, remember here, it's just, this is our guitar chain. So we've got all our effects here. So it's gonna receive all of this on the DI signal, and then that's sending into our guitar bus, which has more processing, and then that's getting sent to this tracer that we're gonna record the output of. So in Reaper for this tracer track, your DAW might be different, but you gotta to go to the section here, record output, make sure you record the mono output. So you can see I bypassed it there just to see what the DI signal was. So we've got our chain on it, it's all working. It's sending into this tracer track channel here. Now all we need to do is arm this track here and hit record. So once you've done that and you finish recording, You'll see here, we've got our recorded DI here with that printed signal. So if I make another track here, drag this down and isolate that, you can see that we've got our track. Render your file here, make sure it's in mono and just export that out. So once you finish doing that, you can come back to this section here with the setup. So you just wanna select that file that you saved from your recording here. So I've got mine under Trace Guitar Fortin, and you can see here, it's got a tick, so they check the levels. So it's got a bit of headroom there, which is good. They want a minimum of like, I think five dB. So once that's done, you can go to proceed. And then you've got this option here. There's the default or the advanced. The advanced looks like it just gives you like a higher render sort of like a better quality, like if you're exporting a video, you can do it like at a better quality. So you can use your CPU or GPU. So use GPU because that's gonna be better and faster if you've got a good computer. This will take a little while as well, especially using the advanced. I think it took me maybe like 10 minutes. Didn't take too long, but you hit start tracing and then we'll wait for it to complete. And then you're gonna have this option here where you can tweak the amp further. And they've got a couple of amps here, which if you don't have an amp, which isn't added, you can just use the generic one. That's what I used here. But if you have the exact amp, you can actually select that. It's gonna help with how it's gonna match the, the tone of it and the trace. Then you hit match settings, and then you move on to the next. And then you can add all your info. So you can name the trace. You can select the guitar or bass, or if it's high, low gain, and you give it some notes as well. Add what amplifier, you know, what microphones you used. Um, you know, any pedals, cabinets, etc. Then once you've saved it to a folder here, you can go down to your traced folder and then you can see I've got Fort Nameless here. I can click it, load it up and tweak it further if I want to tweak any of the sounds, you know, the gain, treble, presence, level, anything. And then you click it to reset it. And obviously you got all your other traces that you downloaded or created here. So this is really cool and pretty nifty as well, especially if you're using different IRs and you want to just sort of capture a sound that you've created yourself and just have it ready to go there. You can kind of just load it up into a session pretty quick with one button after you've got it loaded up. You don't need all your plugins and presets there. You can just kind of have it all here and you can share it with the community as well. So if you do want to check out this one that I've created and you like the sound of it, you can go to the Tracer Exchange here and just search my name Terrence in the search bar here and you'll find it here and you can download it. So thanks for watching. Hopefully this helped you out. Good luck with the tones and I'll see you in the next video.